Ranma One Half fans may not be familiar with this young lady. Let me introduce you to Lum, Japanese icon and starlet of Rumiko Takahashi's premier work, Yurosa Yitsura, those obnoxious aliens. She is a mystic, magical oni, a Japanese ogre from outer space. Characterized by her teeny tiny tiger striped bikini, and small horns sticking through her bushy, flowing green hair. She is the unwelcome house guest and fiance of hornball protagonist Ataru Moroboshi, and she zaps him with electricity attacks whenever his unfaithful eye doth wander. In the world of Ranma One Half, there have been more than a few nods to Yurasa Yatsura. Sometimes I'll need a keen eye to see them, but they'll be lurking in the background every once in a while, just begging to be noticed in a Where's Waldo kind of way. You can imagine how I squealed with girlish glee when I found out that Ranma and company, along with this pale priest dude that I didn't know, came across an Oni trapped in a box. Oh boy! Could it be Lum? This would be the perfect opportunity to bring her in. The crossover all us fanboys have waited for! The spirit ward that trapped the Oni in this box had become tattered and old. The second the print became illegible, the beast would escape and run amok. Ranma, Son, and Genma braced themselves, for they were the Earth's sole line of defense. Hoop, hoop, hoop! Quiet on the set! Here she comes! <laughs> hey! That's not Lum! Oh well, at least it's wearing the same underwear. Believe it or not, this compass creation is actually an Oni. Maybe what Lum looked like in a sort of larval stage. In this form, the Oni is weak and it needs to feed to grow to its true form, and it does this by leeching onto humans like a parasite. It phases through the head and takes over the mind of the host. Since the Oni is evil, the host, in turn, becomes evil, and will do everything in its power to destroy anyone who dare interfere with the feeding. In addition to this, the Oni is mischievous at heart, and will make the host do silly, hateful things just to screw with people. Once inside the human mind, the Oni is actually feeding on human negativity. Hatred, jealousy, vengeance, and evil are just some of the things at the Oni buffet. The more sinister the host, the more appetizing he or she is to the Oni. It's easy to spot an Oni once it has possessed somebody, for once he's in, the two horns that appear on the head is a dead giveaway. So what can one do to exorcise this wily demon? It's fairly simple, actually. All one has to do is give an old-fashioned knuckle sandwich to the head of the host, and the Oni will be expelled. Of course, getting him to stay out of a human body is the tricky part. It will jump into another host quicker than a hiccup, so one had better be quick to capture it. This devious little orb may look ridiculous, but he is fairly smart, too. He came up with the most ingenious plan, one that would ensure his safety and leave him free to feed indefinitely. He jumped into Kasumi Tendo. True, her dark side is buried under copious amounts of fluff, but everyone's got one. There's a little bit of selfish desire in that pretty little head of hers. It'll take a little more time, but there's enough there for the Oni to thrive. Expelling the Oni in this case would be the same as in any other case. The only way to get it to leave its nest is to punch Kasumi in the head. I will repeat that because it bears repeating. The only way to get it to leave its nest is to punch Kasumi in the head. You don't punch Kasumi in the head! That's just an unwritten rule! So unless there's another method to ejecting the Oni that we don't know about, the Tendos and the Saotomes are helpless, and the Beast has already won the game. And until they figure out something, they will have to deal with the unthinkable, an evil Kasumi. The funny thing is that evil Kasumi is actually quite pleasant. She never gets violent nor angry. She is, however, pesky and impossible to live with. She pulls pranks, spends money frivolously, and adds little sprinkles of evil to her daily routine after which she actually apologizes for her actions. My, how cute! Even under the possession of a Japanese ogre, Kasumi is still daddy's little girl. As the Oni feeds and feeds and feeds on Kasumi's each and every desire, it is slowly getting larger. Eventually, the Oni will be a big red machine, free to slaughter indiscriminately, 
an abomination with no visible weaknesses. What makes the situation twice as dire, the Oni do not willingly leave their hosts. When they do, it's usually because they've used them up. Kasumi's life is in horrible danger, what's one to do? There is something to be said for the Spirit Ward, blessed writings to which the Oni cannot pass. One can perimeter off a small area and hamper the beast's movements, and it seems to be the only thing that works on the Oni. But can they be the key to defeating the undefeatable? Only time will tell. Who knows how Ranma and his friends will get out of this little pickle? And who knows if we'll ever see Lum and Ranma Saotome cross each other's path? With the official final episode of Ranma One Half in the can in 1992, the possibility looks doubtful at best. But never say never in the world of anime. To break it down to a common denominator, Vampire Hunter D made a comeback 16 years later. Cutie Honey made a comeback 20 years later. A live-action version of Gigantor came out 39 years later. Speed Racer came back in a big way 40 years later. And Astro Boy made comebacks on numerous occasions. And with the success of the crossover animation It's a Rumic World, featuring characters from Yurusa Yatsura and Rama One Half, perhaps there's a glimmer of hope that someday, these two juggernauts may return, and perhaps give us that fateful encounter we've all been waiting for. This has been a Runma One Half character profile!